This is East Carolina Hall of Famer and Utah Jazz first round draft pick Blue Edwards. You're listening to Pirate Basketball Overtime on the Sports Objective, your home for the best East Carolina hoops coverage. Welcome in to Pirate Basketball Overtime right here on the Sports Objective. Pirates with a big win, 72, Memphis 71. The crowd, I can still see the crowd going on the floor there. Williams Arena at Menji's Coliseum with us right now. Bubba Rosenbaum from China Grove. Don't you w- wish you were with me, Bubba, tonight? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. would have certainly loved to have been there. I had intended on uh, attending, but, uh, you know, with everything going on this week with some sickness in the family and so forth, uh, Needed to stay at home, but uh, we'll definitely be making it down uh, here in the next few weeks. Well, since we had such great reviews last week and the numbers were through the roof, that's what we're all about in our business, of course. We had to bring <laughs> back our good buddy, B Pays. Oh, Tell it like it is. What's up, man? I had to be back. Glad to get that W today. We needed it. Yes, we did. And uh, there you go. Thank you, Charles, joining us. And how about them Pirates? I'll tell you what. Uh, really proud of this team. You know, Pace, when there's been all this talk for some reason in Pirate Nation about Dooley and, you know, about contracts and all that, i tell you what, every single game, I was t- saying this in the press conference as we waited for Dooley, every single game now, we're in every game. It's a close game. I told the guys I'm glad I took my blood pressure medicine this mm-hmm. morning, uh, late morning, because I had once again – Another buzzer beater. Bubba, you know, I even asked uh, Coach in the press conference about uh, – we'll try to see if we can get that up on YouTube uh, here later on. But uh, for the very fact of – is he getting used to buzzer beaters? Because, my goodness, it's four buzzer beaters, and we've won three out of four of them. And just think about it, guys. That's how close, razor thin, how difficult it is to win, period, no matter what sport it is. But Joe Dooley has done a fantastic job, and I – and for those people that want to get rid of Dooley, don't think he's done it good enough. I'll tell you, if you if you get rid of Dooley, we're not going to get anybody anywhere close to Dooley if you get rid of him. I don't think that's the case, especially after a great win today. Um, but I hope for those people that are Dooley haters, I hope that that silenced <laughs> the crowd, so to speak, on that regard. Well, yeah, Dave, I think a lot of those people. I'm sorry, Pays, but uh, you okay? Uh, a, a lot of those people, I think, they just lack perspective. And, you know, mm-hmm. they want the Pirates to be successful. There's no doubt, um, as we all do. But um, – and there's no doubt that this team can make you pull your hair out at times. But we've literally had a chance to win every game um, going into the last three or four minutes of the game. And uh, tonight, just like we have on several other occasions this season, uh, we found a way to get it done. It wasn't always pretty. Um, there were plenty of plays, like I just mentioned, that – made you want to scream and pull your hair out. And I'm sure Coach Dooley was over there on the sideline. But um, down 19 in the first half, down 14 at halftime, and then still down 10 points with 2.12 to go. And we erased that 10-point deficit in a matter of a minute and 13 seconds. This is what happens when you're a Pirate fan and being 40, those are watching and listening. Um, I don't have a lot of hair. So that, that forty, almost 49 years of life and – being a pirate fan, it's easy to, especially a basketball fan, <laughs> when you're in Greenville, it's hard to be a UC basketball fan. But I tell you what, Pays, it's really, really awesome to be a pirate fan. But the, this particular case with basketball, um, I know we've talked about it almost every uh, overtime we've had after every game, but it's nice to see the pirates winning. So many people were gloom and doom after Gardner, and we mm-hmm. love Jaden. We have nothing against Jaden, but I told everybody. Just because Jaden's gone, we didn't want him to go. But just because he's gone doesn't mean it's going to be the end of the world. It's a different world we live in now with college sports, especially college basketball, the transfer portal. Well, guess what? The portal has actually helped us. You would, yeah. In the years past, 
all those kids that transfer back when we were growing up, Pays and uh, and, and Pirate Nation and when, and in school, when back in the day it used to be, man, a guy going out. But now with a transfer pro, the basically free agency for college sports, now we're picking up guys that and some people would say we have no business having, but we do. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, Vance Jackson struggled a little bit earlier today, but you know that was, I mean, how big's that three? You know, to tie the ball game up, and then, um, you know, we, we, you know, we don't have JJ today. I, I you know, JJ probably would have done well in a game like this, um, being able to shoot. You know, because we needed the perimeter shooters. It was tough to get inside that paint today um, with Memphis with their size and length. Uh, but it was good for, I mean, great for Vance. Uh, I mean, in Newton struggled, but he came up with a, you know, a big three there. Um, so, you know, it was good. You know, I tell you, we are, I was talking about this again. We probably are like a big man away from really being good. Um, we still struggle at that five spot a lot. You know, um, mm -hmm. I thought Frank played some good minutes today. Um, he had a couple of big shots, um, but, you know, Debo struggled when he came in. Um, but we are definitely uh, a five away from really being uh, real good. I, I said this uh, on uh, social media today. I, I don't remember the last time East Carolina had a big man that could just take the ball and go up and dunk it, like inside, could just go up and dunk. I mean, maybe Andre a couple of years ago. Um, but, uh, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, this is a huge win today. Even though Memphis was down a little bit, um, you know, and now it sets you up for a UCF home game. You need to get that one because you got a tough road yep. with uh, Houston at Memphis again. Uh, I think we can take care of Cincinnati at home. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, Musa, Musa was, uh, Musa was one of those guys that could go, but, um, I see, uh, Frank putting Moose is one of those guys. But, yeah, it's just – there was a couple of times today, I think, when we go inside, instead of just going up, we always were trying to, you know, I guess, you know, draw the foul or whatever. But good win today, though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Bubba. I know you've got the the video that last minute. Okay. Yeah. Right, do you want to do game notes? Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll go to that final sequence where you, know, you see uh, the inbounds pass there with one second left and the uh, game-winning shot by Brandon Suggs. Shout out to Josh Thomas for that video, by the way. Thank I'll you, I'll be Josh. with the refs taking a look at that last play, though, giving us going from 0.7 seconds to one second because Brandon probably doesn't get that – doesn't have a chance to get this uh, shot off with 0.7. Uh, so I'm glad they went and looked at that clock on that last sequence there. Yeah, well, he still had – he. Uh, we, we checked through the media. He had uh, – by the way, Pays, he, he – uh, Ball left his hands with 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6. Yeah. So what's the rule? What's the rule? You, what is the point? There's something. That, there's some rule where it's only you, you only have like 0. 0.5 or something. You can you just have to throw it up. Is that? I yeah. Can't I'm trying to remember what it is now. 0. 0.3, 0. 0.5, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was thinking it was, it was at least three or four tenths. Yeah. You have, have to have at least that or a a shot. Yeah. yeah shout out to uh, Tremont. That was a great pass. Oh, he put man. it right on the – yeah, I mean, Brandon Brandon got him a little tug on, which was good. Uh, he, he pushed right – which is good. I mean, the way they were calling this thing today, I don't know. I couldn't tell what was a foul and what wasn't at some at some points in the game. Um, but they were uh, – yeah, that was, a, that was a great, a great pass, a great pass. And by the way, guys, I want to mention too, 
Uh, I'm very happy that I, it was an inconvenience for me, but I sent Bubba the Bubba. I sent you that picture if you want to show it. Uh, traffic jam pays. I take a left on 14th, right near the um, not to be ADD theater, but I still don't understand why Harris Teeter pulled out of that shopping center when you have the Jolly Roger right there. And I was that was bothering me when I see no no grocery store at that corner. I turned left right there. And there's a traffic jam just to get into the parking lot. I said, oh, man, this is going to be a good day for the Pirates. And yeah, then lower, yeah. lower, no parking, lower Menjis whatsoever, guys. I mean, that's uh, usually that's a empty parking lot pretty much. And I just pull up really quick and walk up the hill as fast as I can. But uh, we had to park um, Bubba, your side of the stadium for football. No, the north side is where they had us uh, go for overflow. So yeah, it actually yeah. turned out to be a, a easier walk for us. <laughs> it was a better – uh, parking spot where the media parks. So anyway, just really happy about that. And the only complaint I have and to be fair to the administration, I know what they'll tell me, but uh, pays, as you know, and we were talking about in the green room, uh, the concession stands, we we've got to do a better job. Um, I know there's a struggle right now with not get, being able to get enough staff, but there's got to be, um, we were talking about that last week with uh, all the fraternity sorority groups, all the civic groups, that we have out in the community, church groups, band boosters. There's got to be enough of them out there that we can open up concession stands, especially on a Saturday at four o'clock. If this is maybe a Tuesday night game, something mm -hmm. like that, maybe you can understand it pays, but we've got to have a, we've got to have the mindset to know that that game. And then I felt like the, between us, a lot of the media between, there was a lot of hype for this game, rightfully so. And, um, the students came out today, but there was just not enough concession stands open today. And I don't want to. And, 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 and my know. question, you know, my question is they have a deal with Aramark, I believe. Is that correct? I believe they are. So at some point, do you why don't you lean on those folks to help address this? Because this is a. You know, any business where in any business you're in, if you have this continuous problem that goes from football to basketball, if you have this continuous problem that's happening, you know, at some point the excuses have to stop and you have to address it as an administration. You can't just continue to let it go. So you need to look at other outlets. If it's if you can't get part-time workers, if you can't get, you know, we talked about going to church and civic groups. Okay, then let's have a conversation with Aramar. I'm sure that, you know, and, I, and I'm not sure, like, you can tell me because I really never go to the Pirate Club hospitality thing that they used, you know, they did in the, uh, I don't know, do they still do that, Bubba, the one over yeah. in uh, Murphy? Over at Harvey yeah, Hall. Yeah, Harvey Hall. Well, Harvey, yeah, I mean, yeah, over Harvey. I mean, do they have problems putting people to do that? No, they don't. They're when usually I've, when I've been to that, it's always been, uh, you know, well handled. I mean, you got a staff of ECU marketing and pirate club folks. Hey, tell you what my daddy told me a long time ago. Don't ever ask, don't ever do something you won't ask your staff to do. Okay. Sometimes you might have to step up and go run a concession stand. Casey I mean, makes a good point on YouTube too, um, Bob, on that. The baseball concessions are they've got we, we've got a lot of people that go to baseball games and see they know the baseball. They they got their act together, but you know that this team this year is winning. Mm -hmm. And this was a marquee matchup, knowing this is uh, – you've got Memphis, Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock, perfect timing for the game. Everything was right about today, even though I was disapp – not disappointed when it was an inconvenience because it took me so long to get into the parking lot. Then to find a space, you know, we had to wait. How about waiting in a line for a pace at the ticket window to get tickets? Um, yeah, I saw that. So, pic I thought that. I think it was the picture of you. Yeah. yeah, I saw that picture uh, of uh, waiting to get in. Yeah, so all those things were a good sign, and they did a nice job. The ticket uh, folks did a nice job of uh, seeing a huge line of students. The game had just started, and they came out there and checking, and they were letting them in quick, which was great. So I'm trying to be fair. As, uh, what, the name of our show is a Sports Objective, so I'm being objective when I saw things handled right then uh, kudos to them because they were getting their students in as fast. It was a huge line for the student tickets. So I was happy to see them doing that. But 
Um, but that one thing with concessions, I was like, I didn't, I, I'll tell you this. I did not buy on purpose. I did not buy a single concessions today because I was so, I was so, I was mad um, because I'm like, how could you not well, have it's it? Not open? Just, it's not just that Dave, you, you didn't want to miss the game. Uh, exactly. So well, and, and you have to, you know, we talked about this last week. At some point you have to make sure the casual fan that's coming to these basketball games are going to come back. You want to turn off a casual fan? Don't have concessions, right? Because the casual fans will spend some money concession stands. A basketball guy, like, you know, like when I go to the game, me and my dad, we get our stuff and we walk in. That's it. You know, we'll get our drink and we'll popcorn or whatever, and that'll be it. But, you know, casual fans want to go at halftime, maybe go get another drink or whatever. Have that line messed up? Yeah. I'm telling you, the casual fan's not coming back. And that's and and so easy. As far as the concessions issue is concerned, you know, I don't want to – not knowing all the details, I don't want to pass too much judgment there. But at the same time, you know, and during football season, obviously at Dowdy Ficklin, there's a lot more concessions. Uh, but at the same time for, for basketball, um, you know, you do have um, more of an issue with COVID right now. So you do have to take that into consideration. But knowing that – there's going to be probably at least four and a half, five thousand people there tonight. I would have, you know, and maybe they did um, turn over every stone to make sure that I had more concessions open and that those things were going to come off uh, seam seamlessly because, um, like Pace is saying, that those casual fans, you want them to have a excellent experience so they continue to come back and because everything they saw on the court. Uh, you know, how could they not enjoy what they saw? And, and how could you not come back after a game like that? Exactly. It's like we talked about games, you know, game experiences. I mean, that's when you are in a situation where you're trying to grow a program and try to get more people to come out, you know, um, you know, if that concession situation would have been great tonight, the person that was thinking about maybe coming to the Tuesday game, you know, you got UCF at home on Tuesday. They might come back, you know, but if they're a casual fan that does let go to every game, they already have a problem. That's going to be, I mean, at the end of the day, and this is, like I said, this is not, you know, I don't, I think sometimes I think I don't, I've only met John Gilbert once in my life and he was nice, I mean, he was nice guy. But at the end of the day, this is his job. This is, it, it flows up, you know, and he has to address it. He can't continue to give excuses for it. You have to address the situation and take care of it. I mean, listen, it can't continue to be in any business that you're in that if you continue to do this, you know, if you're in the sales business and you continue not to make money or if you're in a the coaching business and you continue not to win, there's going to be a point where there's going to have to be a change made. Well, you know, they complained about the concessions during football season. It was every game. Okay, you get the baseball, basketball season, you're still having those same things. You have not addressed it yet. So, Yeah, I mean, and the, as Casey pointed out, with the baseball, um, they have their ducks in a row over baseball because they know that we've got to have our act together. If you don't, And it's, and it's less uh, baseball concessions, to be fair, too. Um, than basketball or certainly by way it's not even close with football how many you have to have but I was just uh, my my personal thing is not that I'm upset because we won the game um, so I'm not one of those people nitpicking like some people may think right now listening or watching it's just simple that's one of those things that to me is uh, low-hanging fruit um, and I know it's COVID like we said but um, definitely want to, we could talk hours about that, um, but let's uh, move on to, Bubba, I know you have the game notes uh, ready, so let's move on to that before we go too much of a tangent on that. Um, yeah, yeah some, of these, some of these things we'd already mentioned. Um, we're talking about being without J.J. Miles. J.J. is averaging a little over nine points a game, um, but he's 6'7". Um, Paige kind of referenced this earlier, a uh, game like tonight against a team that's so athletic and uh, long like, Memphis is, uh, you would have liked to have had that 6'7 body and uh, J.J. Miles and with all of his experience, both on the offensive and defensive ends. Um, 
And then also Memphis was dominating in the paint. I, we need to look at the final numbers, but at one point. Um, First Memphis, half has 28 points, Bella. Coach okay. Said. At one point uh, there in the second half, it was 38 to 12 Memphis in the paint. But um, Memphis, um, as some of our viewers had asked, they were missing um, two of their top four scores. Uh, but the thing is, is um, DeAndre Williams, 11 a game, and then Landers Nolly, nine a game. So they they were without those guys, and we were without J.J. Miles. So, um, we trailed by 19 in the first half, 14 at halftime, 10, which is 2.12 to go, and then uh, 5,107 in attendance. And that was awesome to see. And like we've mentioned so many times, I mean, you still have, you know, another 2,500 plus seats. And you saw that atmosphere tonight. The atmosphere is tremendous. If you weren't able to watch the game, uh, you, you maybe saw the clip we showed a few minutes ago, but all the clips will be up on our YouTube channel. So be sure to check those out and you can really get an appreciation for what you missed if you haven't seen it. And then uh, Memphis, they come into tonight w winning 38 straight when shooting at least 50%. Tonight they were 50% on the nose, and um, that streak obviously came to an end. No doubt, Bubba. And, uh, Pace, we were talking about, I know, with that Pirates just need a win, right? I think we even talked about this game last, uh, last overtime we did last week, and – you know, this program got a marquee win, and I know that maybe people can say, well, Memphis doesn't have the record they normally, but they're still Memphis. And they had unbelievable talent pace. They were so long and athletic. And I remember yeah. uh, T.J. Long, first year Dooley came back, he said, uh, I'll never forget, it was one of the games, conference games, and we we're at the Harvey Hall, and he looks at me, and he was, we were talking to another man, and he says, Dave, he said, we only have like three guys that can actually could compete in American on our roster. Well, when you look at take where Dooley was at the beginning of his career a few years ago, where there's like three guys, Gardner was one of them, maybe you put Newton and uh, Suggs in there. But anyway, you've got three, four guys that could compete in American when Dooley takes over versus now where there's a lot of guys that are American quality players that we have on the roster. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to the transfer portal, the the nice job he's done with the high school recruiting, um, man, I tell you what, like you said, the, if we can get a rim protector for this team, uh, light <laughs> it will be lights out. And we'll actually, instead of those of us dreaming about and being a pipe dream to compete for a conference championship, we'll be right there in the mix, brother. Yeah, I mean. Absolutely. I mean, I like Frank. Yeah, I think Frank's going to get better. I mean, I think I think more playing time he gets, and I think because I think we got we get what three years out of him left. Is that right? That sounds I think right. He's got, yeah, I think he's got three years left. You know, I, I like him a lot. I'm surprised. Um, is uh, what's the other big guy? Less is less than is he still out? We haven't really seen him at all. Yeah, him and um. Yeah, we haven't seen him, and of course, Winston Tabs out for the year. Those two are yeah. the ones that we haven't seen at all. So, yeah, well, I, I, lessons lessons played. Um, you know, and there there were some games there where where Leston you know played seven, eight, nine minutes, but um, yeah, but now I, I think it's more coach's decision than any type of injury. But obviously, yeah. you know, Winston Tabs underwent that season-ending knee surgery, and uh, fingers crossed that he'll be able to come back from that. Um, and you know, Winston Tabs has three years. I believe Zoe Frank has has just two. So um, I could be wrong on that, but I, I believe he is a junior. So he'll have this year and next year. And uh, Brandon, uh, what's Brandon Jones? Oh, oh yeah, I mean, he's a freshman. DJ. That's the great so thing. I think he's if Brandon can get in the weight room, Brandon gets in the weight room a little bit. I think Brandon's going to be because uh, you could tell today. That Brandon, if he'd have had probably a little bit more weight on him, he could have been a little bit more effective because those guys were long and physical. And yeah. Brandon, I think it surprised Brandon a lot um, with their, their physicality, you know. So I think getting him in, and I say, I think the same thing, I'm, I'm hard on Suggs because I think Suggs at some points just plays out of control sometimes. Um, I think Newton does that at some points too, but I think Suggs sometimes they just play. Like a little bit out of control, but Suggs is a guy that I think could 
you put a little bit more weight on him because he's not scared to get in there. Um, it's just that, you know, he's, he, um, you know, he's a little light. My dad used to say a little light in the pants. Um, you know, when he, when he's getting inside, you know, getting inside, <laughs> but I think, you know, a good, a weight program. And I mean, I don't even know who are, who, who is our basketball strength guy. Do we know who is our, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember his name. name. Yeah. 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 So, you know, get, disciple get, big John, I'm not, I can't think of his name to save my life. Yeah. 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 So, you know, get, getting those guys in. Cause I like Brandon a lot. He's a, he's going to be a, he's going to be a good one. Cause you know, you go into next year and you're going to lose Vance, but tabs can hopefully take those points that you're going to lose from Vance. Um, and then, um, you know, you got, you're getting, to, you know, Smalls getting some run this year, which I like him. I think Felton's going to Felt, get RJ Felton. He can jump out of the gym. Oh my God. Yeah. I love and, and he fights that too. basket. And he's feisty too. That's what I like. Yeah. He got a little attitude to him. I like that. Um, but you know, and then hopefully, uh, I don't know what our, uh, I need to look and see what our scholarship situation is. But what, what do we got? We, we've signed a couple already, right? I'll have to look at it. As far as our strength coach, it is uh, Jason Martinez. And, okay, yeah, uh, Jason. I've heard Coach Dooley give uh, Coach Martinez a lot of a lot of props and. Uh, uh -huh. Really commending him on the job he's done with these guys in the off season. Yeah, we just and, and, and you know I don't know what he's. I'm, I'm sure we're going to hit the transfer portal again. We might try to find another guy like Advance Jackson to come in and, and to come in and play next year. But you really only graduate with JJ and Vance, right? Is that it? Yep, um, that's correct. And then, yeah. and then knock on wood as far as these other guys with the with the portal or you know. Yeah. You get tabs, you'll get tabs back, you'll get tabs next year. So hopefully some of those guys will be able to, um, you know, because we've got, uh, let's see, how many, how many conference games do we have left exactly? Well, we, um, you know, you play 18, we, we were down two. We did reschedule the South Florida game and that we missed from New Year's Day. That yeah. was rescheduled. Yeah, we should have played six by now. That was rescheduled for the middle of February, and then um, hopefully we'll be able to make the Wichita State game up. So, so, so we, we got are, at least we're, 11, we're, 11. We're two and two. We got thirteen left, and, and thirteen then we'll, left. Ho hopefully fourteen if we add the Wichita State game back to it. And we're at eleven. So hey, we Pace, we're at eleven wins, brother. Already eleven already. I mean, if we can figure a way to go seven and seven these last, if we can figure a way to go seven and seven. I mean, you're looking at. You know, you're looking at 18 and well, have you put it to 18, 18 and 12. 12. Yeah, we got to be knocking on. You know, we, we you know, close to NIT. Huh? That's close to NIT, right? Yeah, I think it would depend on what we would do in the tournament. In the conference like, tournament. Yeah, yeah, I think it would depend on what we do in conference. We could figure a way to grab Win one a or, game two or two in there. Yeah, I think at 20 wins, we're there. I think they're, you know, I think we're close because especially if we get a, a quad one or two win here in the next. I'm trying to think who's in that quad one. Houston's in that quad one. I think since he's yeah. in quad two, right? That's correct. Yeah. So if we could get, uh, if we can beat a Cincy, I don't know where Temple's at. I think they're right on the board of quad three, quad two. Um, so if we can, you know, beat them and let, and let those guys continue to win too. So. And I don't know what our net is overall, but that Southern Miss game, I know right before Christmas on December 21st, even though we did beat them, uh, the, we struggled um, essentially, um, and that hurt our net um, as far as our resume for postseason. But this team, well, like we talked about, is learning how to win games. At least we're, we're at the point we're talking. We could easily be talking about, a five or six uh, win team like you and I have been through many, many years, Bubba. A lot of people watching this show, listening. they are awesome fans in Pirate Nation. Uh, we've struggled. So the fact that we already have 11 wins, not that I'm happy with 11 wins, but considering where we are in the season with 11 wins, um, I'm not going to be content for the rest of the season to be uh, obviously 11, but I think we can – 16, 17, 18 wins is, is uh, extremely doable. It's not uh, me being the king of wishful thinking. Yeah, so we still got Tulsa who's struggling. Um, 
you know, I think we can beat Tulane down there. Um, I think UCF's the game we can win this week. I think Cincinnati we can win at home. Houston's going to be tough. At Memphis is going to be tough. You know, it's, it's a tough place to play. Um, yeah, but two years ago, we – we had them on the ropes. You remember that pace? Yeah. We had them on the it ropes. Four, four or five up. years ago, we beat what Prince uh, – what was Prince's last name? Point guard. Prince, Prince Williams. Prince, Prince Williams, Williams. had a heck of a game. We beat him at Memphis that year. Well, last last year, even though we shot the ball very poorly, remember that was when we were coming off that win over number five Houston, and we went out there, didn't, um, shoot, it, didn't shoot it well at all, and we still had a chance in the final minute, two minutes. Yeah, yeah, two years yeah. ago with it, when we were out there, it was uh, man. So we've come close to beat Memphis, and we're we're in every single game, like we said. Uh, Bubba, I know you have the individual numbers. Um, okay, I think Ken Palm has us at one forty nine. Thank you, Chuck. And um, we need to be. We realistically need to be. If there's somehow we could, I don't know if we can um, be a top one hundred team. Don't you think pays to be anywhere close to a a bubble team for the – we need to be, like, around top 100 to have a shot at the NIT. That's my – I mean, you have 68 yeah, yeah. teams in the, the big dance, so that would be, what, 32 for uh, – if they go with a normal t uh, tournament this year uh, with NIT. So, yeah, we'd have to be top Is 100. Put, yeah, yeah. I have, it's 30 – you said it's 32 for NIT, right? Is that how many they take? 32. Yeah. Yeah. Last year they reduced it to 16. Right for the, the COVID year, yeah. they did it. They did it at a neutral site out there in Texas. Is there still a third one? I know some of them have been canceled. Is there still CIT? Yeah, the, 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 um, the yeah, American doesn't allow you to participate in the CIT, but um, the the CBI, if they have it this year, uh, the CBI is definitely an option. CBI is an option. Okay. And that yeah, that we definitely be, love the we definitely love the yeah. The CBI is the one that has, once you get down to the final two teams in the championship, you have a best out of three series. Oh, man. So that's kind of that's kind of unique. Yeah. That yeah I like that. And yeah, that hey, just the fun. fact that even if we get in the CBI, just the fact that we're playing, uh, <laughs> playing into April or hopefully deep into March, I mean, that's a, that's a huge accomplishment uh, for people outside the program. They may not understand that. Um, because they go to the big dance every year. But for us, uh, that's a really big deal. And it's definitely a step headed in the right direction for, with Dooley and company. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. And, um, you know, Josh Thomas chiming in here. Um, oh, yeah. Once again on Facebook. And Josh and I, uh, when he was nice enough to send me that the video, the final play, um, a little bit before we went live, um, we were discussing the game. And he said, you know, Hell of a game tonight. I told Bubba once we started chipping back at that deficit, it felt like a powder keg ready to blow at any moment inside of Menji's. Um, and once Suggs hit them, that game winner, it absolutely or went absolutely uh, nuts in there. A um, great day to be a pirate. And we no have doubt. four. We have four teams left on our schedule that are in the top 100 on Ken Palm. It's uh, Wichita State, UCF, Cincinnati, and uh, Houston. So there's four still left that's in the top 100 right now. I just pulled it up. And we definitely need uh, – we got to win. we got to win. Uh, I would say, what, one or two of those? I mean, we have to – that would help us out being 149. But uh, certainly just winning right now is, is what we need to focus on there. So uh, let's go now to uh, – I know Bubba Pays has individual numbers. Let's go to that, Bubba, now. Yeah, you take a look at it, guys. Each of these teams had five players in double figures. Uh, you know, pretty impressive. Um, you know, you had Brandon Suggs with the game winner. When Suggs came off the bench tonight, uh, had had those game high tied with Vance Jackson for the game high with 17 points, five rebounds. And big thing, he looked uh, much more comfortable with the ball. Only had one turnover that had been an issue uh, in the losses at Temple and as well as Cincinnati. And um, he had only averaged, I think, four or five points in those games. And I think Pays, maybe you mentioned, he only had one against Cincinnati. Uh, so then you had Vance Jackson. Vance knocked down that clutch three um, there with 59 seconds left to tie it up. Uh, 17 points, seven rebounds for Vance. 
So Frank, 11 points, four rebounds. Tristan Newton, 11 and seven, uh, had those seven assists. He, he also did have six turnovers. Um, very atypical for Tristan to have that many turnovers. And then uh, Robinson White and uh, Trey Mott, 11 points and five assists. And um, the majority, if not all of those, were in the first half. I think he, he knocked down three three pointers probably in the first 10 to 12 minutes of the game. And most of those turnovers on Tristan are coming when he's having to play point guard. Yep. I think, you know, once again, I think if you can put Robson White at point and put him at two, I think it just, it, you know, Newton to me is not a creator. He's more of a off the ball guy, you know, go, he can, he, he can maneuver, but I think he, I think he just has issues. He's not a, you know, we talked about last night, he's not a Miguel Paul or somebody can, He's got some size on him, the quickness of beating somebody off the ball. I don't, you know, of uh, uh, dribbling, of uh, uh, driving to the basket and beating somebody. A quick point guard like they had today, and quick defenders is going to give him problems all year. Yeah, he's a natural too, and that's the thing is that nice to have him where we know his ball handling skills are through the roof. Um, but when you have, I just that was my my biggest concern this year is you have. TRW, who's a, I mean, you want to talk about a defender? That guy could play some defense. And uh, you look oh, at. He bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he's aggressive, <laughs> man. He's, he's aggressive. Yeah. yeah. He's real nasty there. And then you have, um, and then the fact you, you can have him um, handling the ball handling skills. And you have Newton that you set up there for that uh, three ball. I'll tell you what, those two, that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't under. I just don't understand, and I don't want to sound like I'm questioning Dooley. It just seems like, like why they they played a lot of minutes tonight. I'm like, why wouldn't they be like that way all the way? Um, do uh, Tremont Robinson White has had injuries in the past, but he's he's completely healthy. Um, so that would be the only reason I would see why you know you wouldn't have TRW come in there. I don't know. Yeah, and I think you know, um, you know, you got you. I mean. Small got some. I like Small a lot. I think he's going to be. Oh yeah, he's going to be special. Um, it's more playing time that he gets. Kids athletic too. He's sneaky athletic. I don't think you know. I think people don't. You know, he's one of those guys. That he might get you one on one. You think he's going to lay it up, and he might yank it on you. I mean, he, he's you know kind of one of those guys. And it could be a lot with JJ not being available too, having to. You know, I you know I'm not sure. I mean, I think the offense runs s smoothly when Tremont's running. I think it runs better. I think it Absolutely. does because see, Tremont can beat you on it. Tremont can get to the basket. Tremont can get to he's he's quick and physical enough to get to the basket. Now and he can shoot threes. And he can shoot threes. Now Newton to me is better when he gets the ball mid range. Then he can work. But if he's having to, if he's having to get, you know, he, he, you know, if you're setting plays for him, setting screens, you know, I mean, he, 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 you know, he can shoot. He's been off the last couple of games a little bit, but, um, but you know, I, I like Tremont. I, I think that you know, Dooley, because he's got one year left too, right? He got two years. Uh, Tremont, one year, one year after this year, right? For Tremont, yes. Yeah, so he's got one year after this. Year. He, the, COVID, the COVID years always mess me up. <laughs> he was, he was, he, he, Tremont was a JUCO, and then, you, and then you have Tristan Newton. You know, Tristan Newton uh, still has because last year didn't count, <laughs> and uh, so Tristan Newton, if he, you know, he still sticks, two after this year, sticks right? with it, has two more after this year, which is crazy to wow. think. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. But um, a couple other points I want to make about those individual numbers. Um, Duran for for Memphis, <clears throat> he and um, also Minot, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, those two were a load to handle on the on the inside. I mean, we talked about that off the air before we went live, guys. Uh, when he got ejected, and Minot that is um, there in the I guess ten to fifteen minute mark uh, range of the second half. Don't recall exactly, but that was a huge blow and. Um, mm -hmm. It was right around the time that the Pirates went into the double bonus for the final 10 minutes. Uh, so those two combined, um, um, you know, did a lot of that damage like we were talking earlier in Memphis, you know, really controlled things in the paint. 
But then uh, how about Imani Bates? Bates was uh, going off in the first half, and all 13 of his points may have come in the first half, at least uh, at least maybe 10 or 11 of them did, because uh, I know he had at least three triples, and I think he finished the game with three three-pointers. And uh, all those were in the first half when they built that 19-point lead. And then you also mm-hmm. had Harris with 13 and Quinones with, with 10. Harris is – yeah, Harris is tough. He's a he's one of those guys. You had to – we were a little bit lazy on the zone a couple of times against him. and he, he, he made us pay. You made us pay. So that's why I always loved uh, – you know, I always referenced Miguel Paul because I thought Paul was probably – in the last fifteen years, I think I think Paul is probably the best point guard we had in this uh, in this thing. Paul, I mean Brock was good and Holcomb Fade was pretty good, but I just thought Miguel was tremendous because Miguel could get to the he was quick, get to the ball, but you also had to play him outside because Miguel could shoot the three, and uh, you know so uh, yeah. Uh, Richard, I don't think Vance Vance is a grad transfer. I see the comment that yeah. he has. He doesn't have yeah, this is it for him. Yeah, yeah he, he's, uh, <laughs> I wish he, we could create another COVID year. That would be great. Yeah. One, they had to keep he, he began his career. He played one at UConn, then two at New Mexico, and last year he was at Arkansas. So um, it was in that COVID year a season ago at Arkansas that allowed him to uh, be a grad transfer and come to us this season. Or we would have never had him, and I uh, think that was uh, we we're, we're very happy to have it. Can you imagine if we had we we talked about that a few times on this show? Can you imagine if we had tabs? I mean, <laughs> with uh, tabs and Jackson. I mean, that's why when going back to not to harp on it, but that's why when people at like Dooley's not doing enough, it's not going his way. We need to make it. You know, I've heard some people making ridiculous comments. Not it's not a lot, but you know for. Uh, a change at you know the head coach and I said why in the world would you set this program back uh, when you make a change you're you're setting the program back a couple of years and what this program needs is consistency I think you're finally starting to see that now uh, God forbid let's not have another COVID uh, like pause like we did last year the month of February where you have no you have no practices or games for 20 some days um, those guys were uh, just naturally not in shape. Even though they were, they were trying to stay in shape, you don't have practices to go to. You don't have the game speed and all that. So um, hopefully we can dodge a bullet this year for the uh, for the remainder of the season over the next what uh, pays we got around two months now left of the season, and hopefully more uh, <laughs> if we can uh, right. somehow right. find a way. To play good down the stretch and with all these games coming up i'm just really excited uh, another thing that uh dooley's brought i don't know about you Paige. you and i probably are the uh, uh the maybe the exception to the rule but most pirate fans let's just say 97 percent of the pirate fans if it's not in season i mean if it's uh, if, yeah if it, the only time they're going to talk about basketball is in season they're not going to talk about basketball outside the off season so to speak and what Dooley's brought is between recruiting everything with his transfer portal, everything. I'm talking about basketball year round with more people now than I ever have in my life. It might be you and Bubba in the past, but all I'd, that's all I'd be talking to hardcore fans. But now a lot, a lot of people are paying attention to this program in the last couple of years I've noticed than I've ever seen in my 35 years of being a Pirate fan. And I'll tell you one thing that I – I don't think people give Dooley credit enough for is he made some sneaky good assistant coach hires and no disrespect to rock and all those guys, you know, a couple of guys that left or whatever, but I think we have the best coaching staff we've probably had here in a long time. And I'm talking assistants and everything because those new guys he brought in, you can tell they've made a difference. And uh, I, I, I like the way, those guys are, you know, and, and um, I don't want to yeah. call any coaches out, but they're le- these guys show emotion on the sidelines. I watch them; they show emotion. They're into the game. We've had some assistants on this staff that would sit down on that bench the whole game and wouldn't move and show no emotion. Now, these guys are really showing emotion. So, 
Yeah, Antoine Jackson, you know, he spent several years on Mick yeah. Cronin's staff at Cincinnati, um, you know, before Mick Cronin left for UCLA. And then you also have uh, Steve DeMeo. Um, he had been a highly successful junior college coach down in Florida. Mm-hmm. And he had also been on the staff at St. John's. So um, we, we do have a tremendous coaching staff. And then, like you said, um, it's great to see the energy they bring each and every night. Uh, Richard chimes in once again, uh, Richard Allsbrook on Facebook saying, it seems to me our offense is built around, uh, or it's not built around one player like previous teams, multiple players step up. It's great to see. And he felt like last year's team or in the last few years had been built around Jaden. Uh, no disrespect to him, but it just seems like multiple players are now contributing. I think we play faster without Jaden. Um, I think we play a little bit more tempo. I mean, not that Jaden's good, but listen, you know, no disrespect to Jaden, but Jaden was a hell of a player for us in four years. But if you watch Virginia right now, and I watched them the other night versus Virginia Tech, and I watched a little bit of the Wake Forest game today, it's the same thing. I mean, it's 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 run the ball to Jaden. I mean, you know, listen, I get that he wanted to leave and be on a bigger platform, the ACC and things like that. But to be honest with you, I don't – it's the same thing, just at a different – he's got a different uniform on. I mean, there's nothing There's nothing different for me, me, him playing at Virginia than it was at East Carolina. Yeah, and if we have Jaden, we may not have Vance Jackson, Winston Tabs. I mean, those guys could may not have come in. Who knows? But um, the good news is uh, I think that it's proven for us to be – uh, a great thing because we have 11 wins and maybe who knows, maybe if we have Jaden still with us, we would obviously love to have him. But um, I know that I think it was Frank that said that, you know, about the Oklahoma game, you know, that one, that one hurts. The Davidson game hurts. The Liberty game hurts because those were games that we could have, should have, would have didn't, mm-hmm. you know, we were so close, but, how, but, but then you go back Frank to the time of not that I'm happy of losing, I'm not a moral victories guy at all, but there have been times we play those guys, we would have been blown out by 30, 40. Oh, yeah, no, we're, yeah, we're not being, you know, as, as much respect as, as Coach Houston gets, you know, on the football side, you know, for victories, you know, for playing games closer than we're you. I got to give Joe the same respect on that side. Because, listen, you know, there's, there, there's points where we were getting, we were getting our tail kicked. You know, and we've been in every game. Uh, I think the Liberty game got away in the last two or three minutes. Um, yeah. But Davidson game should have won that game. You know, Oklahoma, Oklahoma was a t- Oklahoma was a toss. I mean, yeah, I mean that was going back and forth. We just couldn't get a couple breaks. Vance Jackson probably had his worst game ever against Oklahoma. You play Oklahoma a little bit more into the season. I think East Carolina beats them. Um, you know. You lose on a last second shot to Temple. And then, you know, in Cincinnati, that's a tough place to play, but you, you play them hard. I mean, I will be honest with you, I think when Cincinnati comes to Menjis, we're gonna roll we're gonna roll them. Yep. I, I think they're gonna be I think we're gonna get them. I think that they've had troubles in Menjis before with average East Carolina teams. Like that, Dooley beat them the first year. Yeah, yeah, Dooley beat them and Le- and Lebo beat him. What it was, it was about a week from my daughter was born. Was it 2015 ish? We beat Lebo, beat him, beat him in Menjis. Um, so I think we get them. I think, you know, I think we get UCF on, on that. I think, I think there's a couple. I think yeah. we, you know, we won't have problems with Houston. I mean, that's just another, that's another deal. I mean, we're not, if Houston was at home, I would say, okay, we might have it, but that's a tough place. You know, it's tough to go down to yeah. Texas. And yeah, they're not going to forget we beat them last year. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, Lebo, um, under under Lebo, we beat Cincinnati in Minji's on a Sunday afternoon, like like you said, Pays, because I was there. And then uh, we also beat them Coach Dooley's first year. Uh, yeah. yeah Joe's yeah, first, Joe's first year back, we, we beat them in Minji's because yeah. that was the game. That was an awesome picture for the effect Minji's. Uh, can have on an opposing coach when uh, Mick Cronin had his face in his hands multiple times on the bench. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, I mean, we we I mean, we've always had problems up there, but I mean, like I said, we got you know we got thirteen games, maybe fourteen games left. Um, you know, at Wichita will be tricky. You know, I like to get. I hope we reschedule the home game at Wichita because I think we can beat them. Yeah, we just got the the, the over the hump thing now is for this team to win on the road. You know, if if that's South Florida, if that's you know like. You know, going to Tulane and beating Tulane in New Orleans, that'll be a good win. Because, you know, um, Tulane is – I think they lost today to SMU. Um, but, you know, they, they were – they only had one loss in the whole season compared and that was to us. So, um, and Memphis is going to be Memphis. I mean, he gets those players back. I mean, I know Penny's on the hot seat right now. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's definitely with all the you know, talent that he got. I compared him today. Somebody was we we're talking about Memphis. I said Memphis to me, like with Penny, is like how UNC is in football. They get the recruits. Oh yeah, that's a great point. They there. get them. They yeah. recruit well. They have, but they just cannot, you know, turn that around to wins. And uh, you know, I think that is. Uh, you know, I mean, he's got. I didn't. Rasheed Wallace didn't come today. I don't know. He was just the coach. I didn't see him on the bench today. But he's got Rasheed. He's got Larry Brown. I saw Larry Brown was working those refs today, buddy. I mean, yeah, you know, he was working those refs today. So, no question about it. And that, you know, what it didn't work. <laughs> it, it didn't work. I mean, especially uh, guys that uh, that play there were uh, small. I guess it was small. When um, I I didn't know what the ejection, but apparently I understand it was because he came off the minute. I guess came off the bench. He picked up his fourth foul, and then he uh, they they uh, they threw him out of the game because he came. People were asking me that, so I want to make sure I said that on the show. I'm sure everybody on this show uh, watching or listening may know that, but just in case for the people that didn't know and wonder why he was thrown out of the game, you cannot come and and again. We have a hardcore basketball fans watching and listening. You cannot come off the bench. Everybody knows that. Um, and I thought, I thought that the, uh, I know Bubba mentioned this earlier too. He's right. Um, you never know when you you let your emotions get the best of you, like he did, Manad did. That changed the. You were talking. We were talking about at the beginning of the show. That changed the outcome of the game. And, and they uh, better be lucky they get in Memphis. They didn't give the the. So Felton was trying to pick the guy up, or no, it was a Felton. I forgot who it was. It was. I forgot who the foul was. He was trying to pick the guy up. And then the Memphis guy came in mm-hmm. and kind of got in the side. I'm surprised they didn't give the other big guy from Memphis the technical. I thought they were going to give him the technical. You know, I know they gave the guy coming off the bench. And then that's when I like Felton because Felton got feisty. I was like, oh, yeah, I like this kid. Because <laughs> they had to put Felton toward the bench. This film was about to get in, go about to get in that guy. <laughs> and and did you see the the um the as far as uh as far as ECU goes, not the um, ball boy, but the guy wiping up the floor, he actually pulled him back. And the great thing about that is, oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, the great thing about that is he can't be thrown out of the game. Yeah, well, yeah he could have yeah. been thrown out of the game or anybody else. So the good thing is, is that he, he literally. He saved us there because there's no way he's getting tossed. He can't get a technical. Um, so that was really cool. We talked about that at the press conference before, uh, Dooley. And by the way, has anybody helped me out on this? Maybe you guys have. Um, I was celebrating a great win at Parker's Barbecue. Thank you very much. A Memorial Drive. Um, but I don't know if anybody's put that up on social media. I want to see, uh, has anybody put a locker room video up yet? Has there been one? I haven't seen one so far. Maybe I overlooked it so help me out uh, we have the best fans watching listening and the smartest ones so maybe they can help me out on that have you guys i haven't seen I, look, I, the day, the I, ha- I really haven't looked for one either yeah I, I checked the instagram right i mean there was about 12 i saw about 12 different shots of the winning bucket yeah um, and yeah I saw about 12 different shots of the winning bucket but i did yeah. not see um uh uh Shout out to uh, Patrick Johnson too. He had a great call. On the, he had a great call on the. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I told uh, 
I'll season Ben Byram. He was, Al- he was on his best Marv Albert impression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Patrick has hair, so he's got a hair piece. But, uh, <laughs> I love PJ. I'll tell you one thing. Hey, hey, Paige, you know what Monday? Everybody's got to listen. They're going to play that clip over and over. I'll season Ben Byram, the producer of that show, uh, P-Man's producer. I said, man, you know you guys are going to be playing that uh, over and over again for that You know what was great? ESPN social media picked it up quickly and ran it on. Like, well, I think it was within at least five minutes that they they picked it up and ran it because I saw it on Twitter like five minutes later. Wow! That it, yeah, Sports Center, ESPN Sports had picked it up. Wow, that's awesome! So, uh, <laughs> I love Bubba's comments. Yeah, I'm not touching that one. Um, you, remember, you remember when that happened, though, Dave? Oh, I, I I do I do, um, and people were talking about he got a pink slip from uh, NBC. Yeah, yeah, it, it was just <laughs> oh yeah, it, it was referencing more of Albert. So just just you know Google more of Albert's dismissal, and uh, you'll you'll find out uh, what I was yeah. referencing there uh, in our private chat. But um, yeah, they they did. Um, yeah, that was that was a because. It's funny on that call on Patrick's call. He paused for a second after so he hit it because I think he was like, I think he didn't realize what he just saw for a second. He got a pause. I heard Jeff's too. I heard Jeff. I, I don't got a copy of Jeff's, but uh, when I was listening to the post game on the varsity app, uh, they re ran it. Um, they re ran it. I heard, I heard Jeff. So hopefully somebody grabbed, somebody grabbed it. And Chuck chimes in uh, on YouTube saying, um, you know, go to YouTube and type in EC versus Memphis and there'll be a lot of results. And uh, we'll have several of those on our channel. Um, you know, shout out. I've already mentioned Josh Thomas, also Jared Plummer, Diane Pons, um, and, and several others that sent me video clips. And I'll, we'll make a compilation of those. Uh, and, and, you know, you'll see the game winning bucket different by Brandon, Brandon Suggs from several different angles. So, um, you know, guys, I mean, some of the uh, team numbers, and we talked about the difference Brandon Suggs made tonight um, before uh, going live. We, we talked about the difference from the Pirates um, down the stretch, getting into that double bonus with about 10 minutes to go, 16 out of 21, 76%. Memphis was just four out of 11. So despite Memphis having seven more made field goals, um, the free throw line, and then also the three-point shooting, 10 out of 25 for 40%. That, you know, was huge. And East Carolina finding a way to uh, pull out this one tonight. And uh, also, you know, the Pirates took a little bit better care of the basketball than Memphis, even though 14 is too high of a number. And um, we mentioned the Pirate guards at times struggling to take care of the basketball on Memphis. Um, struggled even more, um, 17 turnovers. And East Carolina held its own on the glass, so just a two-rebound differential there, Memphis 37, Pirates 35. I didn't realize we were the number one three-point team in the AAC, so Patrick did going to put that up today. Yeah, I didn't realize we were first. I knew we were near the top because I knew nationally we were in the, I don't know, top 55, top 60. And then you had Tulane. That's that would have been my guess because I knew when we played Tulane here a week and a half, two weeks ago, um, the Green Wave were um, I think 35th or something nationally in three point shooting. Yeah, yeah. No question. Yeah, that, 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 tra- that transfer they got from LSU to Lane. Yeah. Yeah, he's, really oh, man. he's the real deal, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's. Right. he's Really, really strong. So good stuff. I I tell you what that uh, and the the other thing that guys did you um one thing that's scary is uh, and I know I, I feel for the players but uh, I know Vance Jackson was asked that we we'll, we'll have that for you but uh, do you guys ever worry about when you see the crowd and they storm the court that something bad is going to happen? I was just worried. I, I know I've mentioned that, but it's just not. Uh, I, I was really worried about that. Um, I'm a, and, I guess post. I guess post COVID, I'm a little bit more worried about that than anything. I'm a little like the the COVID 
the fear in me says, please don't let a lot of people touch our players because we don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just <laughs> contagious. That's that's what I'm like scares me. Like, yeah, I get it, but that's what that's probably what scares me the most right now because it's not that you know it's not that the the, the variant is is causing people to be majorly sick. It's the testing part that scares me. That you know <laughs> that if they did get tested and it's like oh no, here we, you know here we go again. So. You know, guys, we were talking about some post-game reactions as far as I think it was you, Dave, that mentioned the locker room celebration. Mm -hmm. And Derek May chimes in on Facebook saying that ECU basketball's Twitter account has the locker room uh, reaction. So <clears throat> that would be good. I know Coach Dooley's um, locker room comments from that Tulane win where we battled back and, uh, you know, won in overtime when Tristan Newton scored 14 in overtime on – that was some good uh, locker room footage. Uh, so check out ECU basketball. Or just go at ECU basketball on Twitter. Right. Yeah, that's uh, that's great because we, that was that was just one of those um, those things I was looking for. I guess I haven't looked very close, and I had to. Obviously, I'm not going to be when I was driving home to get here as fast as I could. Obviously, I'm not going to be looking at, at my Twitter feed while I'm driving. Um, I don't but, like that. No. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. No, with the uh, – you've referenced um, some of the other games that were taking place tonight. You had SMU. Um, they defeated Tulane. Tulane was 4-1 and one in the league going into tonight. But uh, Tim Jankovic and the Mustangs won 75-66 to 66 in New Orleans. Uh, you had South Florida. And this one really surprised me, the, w the way UCF had been playing so well. Um, tonight in Tampa, South Florida, 75, UCF, 51. And then you had yes. number number 11, Houston, going to Tulsa. It seems like last year they lost at Tulsa. And then this year um, they, they uh, snuck out of uh, Tulsa in the Reynolds Center with a 66-64 victory behind 29 points by Edwards. I don't think Tulsa's won a conference game yet, have they? Uh, give me one moment, and I'll go through that. Um, they, they are 6-8 and eight overall, but let me bring up the AAC standings. <clears throat> you have Houston, 14-2, and 3-0. and oh. um, let's see, and that has, These haven't been updated since today's games. Uh, so 15-2, and 4-0. and oh. Tulane is now, I think, 7-8, and 4-2. And, and then um, you have SMU. Um, that is four and one, um, and then you have UCF is now two and three, um, but they had been playing pretty well, and they they had defeated. Uh, they had just won against Memphis, um, mm -hmm. and then um, they lost a heartbreaker at the hands of uh, Damian Dunn, just like the Pirates did against Temple, um, when Damian Dunn I think produced a buzzer beater down there in Orlando. Well, wow. yes, this league is this league is probably the most. I mean, Houston is what Houston is, but I think the league is probably the most balanced it's been. And it's balanced. <laughs> and to answer your question, pays no, no, Tulsa has not won a league game. They are now six and nine, oh, and four. You have USF, um, that was South Florida's first league win. They are now six and ten, one and three, and Wichita State, um, they did not play tonight. Um, they came in, or, I mean, they are still 0-3 um, in the league, 9-6 and six overall. So, did we get yeah. to, to, we get Tulsa at home or what? I believe, uh, I know we have them at home. Uh, let's see. We go to Tulsa on February 8th, and they come to Greenville on February 26th. So we get bumped in twice, okay. And then we and then we have those two games against South Florida that are only six days apart now. We it was supposed to be New Year's Day and then and then uh, February twenty third in Greenville, but now it's February seventeenth in Tampa and February twenty third in Greenville. So the only team we don't get this year is SMU. No, we we um, get SMU in Greenville. We don't. We get oh, that's right. Of, we do get out. We get out of well, having to go to Dallas. 
so there's there's another they're a top 100 so that'd be i think i'd be the sixth uh what is it, the pomeroy whatever that is the k the i think they're top 100 too aren't and they Palm. yeah they're top uh i can look real quick i think they are too hold on and frank you were correct as far as um Houston, you're correct in the sense that Houston does not come to Greenville. We just go to Houston. That game is next Saturday. And uh, be sure to join us for that basketball overtime as we'll uh, be catching up with James Legan, uh, who played for Mac McCarthy. But um, SMU comes to Greenville, and we don't go to Dallas. Yeah, so SMU is sick right now. SMU is 68. Um, UCF is 73. Cincinnati is 74, and Wichita State is 88, and Houston is four. So that's that's currently the, the college basketball rating. So these UCF and Cincinnati games at home are very important to us. <laughs> very important to us. Yeah, no doubt, and um, hopefully Pirate Nation, after the show, they were um, you know, privileged to see tonight. I mean, they were definitely a part of that. Uh, I really don't think we make that comeback and win that game because um, I, I really think that the noise that the crowd generated uh, helped there when we were pressing at the end and uh, rallying from down 10 with 2.13 to play. And then, you know, you take a look at it. Um, you know, Dave, you want to go ahead and go to those comments from Tristan Newton and Brandon Suggs? Yeah, I've, I've got the uh, I've got those in Dropbox for you. So I'm, I'm uh, OK. Give me, give um, me a moment. Uh, I cleaned everything up and I you, you up carry on and uh, we'll get to that. OK. All right. Sorry to an audible there, Pays. Uh, oh, that's all right. think we're, uh, we've been working hard trying to get things right. And uh, what we like to do, Pays and I, like, we want to make sure the audio uh, for those that are not to get too deep in the we weeds. But one of the things when I'm listening to a press conference, I cannot stand is when you can barely hear the questions being asked. And so we try to bump up the levels. We try to do it right here, Pays, especially we got B Pays on, man. We got to put out the best China when <laughs> B Pays is like, no paper plates for Pays. <laughs> 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 we got to bring out no, the best. Yeah. I see Richard Osbrook said, how many wins does it take to make the NIT and the NCAA chart? I, I'd say we're going to need 20 for, I mean, you know. Be safe, right? I mean, we might be able to 18, but you're right, Pays. Yeah, That's I think you're going to need 20. you're going to need to break even the rest of it. Or, 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 I mean, if you go if you go seven, if you go nine and five the rest of the conference, that puts you at 20 wins, right? Yeah, I'll put you at 20. And mm -hmm. then if you Sneak a couple in the sneak a couple in the uh, tournament. Then I think if we win nine, if we go nine and so if we're at fourteen games, like if we get fourteen and we win nine, and that put us at what five more? That put us what eleven and what eleven and seven in the conference, something like that. 11 That's and right. Eight. Yeah. Eleven and seven in the conference, I think gets us. I think gets a sniff in the NIT. I mean, I think it will. Yeah. It's gonna take. It's gonna take. Definitely, you're right about that. It's gonna take um, because you got to think about two uh, pays. They'll probably look at our resume with our net. Um, the Southern Miss is gonna be tough, and then some of the games early on that we could have stolen from the likes of Oklahoma. The again, the Liberty. Not to dwell on that, but the Davidson the game. Da the Davidson would have been a. The Davidson would have been the one that I think would have been because they're like what are they like thirteen and one right now or thirteen and two something um, like they're that. Doing, yeah, they're, yeah, I think that they're uh, yeah they're forty three in the in the Kim Palm. So yeah, they're thirteen and three. And I say no, they're fourteen and two. Yeah, they're fourteen and two. Davidson, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that would, stuff, have been, yeah. that would have been that would have been the one that I think we could have stole that one. We'd be in a lot. We'd be in real good shape. No question. I mean, we, we, if we can, like you know, 
like I said, Houston and Memphis are going to be tough on the road. Um, you know, Tulsa will be a toss up. I think we can beat South Florida down there. Um, still got to go UCF too. So we can do it. We can do it. Um, the great thing is the games that we were talking about, we were just trying to claw our way out of the cellar dweller up a spot in the American and whatever conference fill in the blank. And I think now, like we talked about, the next natural step is going to be your middle of the road, uh, middle of the pack, so to speak. And once we get, uh, I think we're, I'd say, two or three years away from really, really getting uh, closer to the upper echelon. I think we're uh, give Dooley a couple more transfer portals and grad transfer and the JUCOs and the and you get the high school is he. I mean, if anybody, Cy Seymour always talks about it. If there's anybody working harder than Joe Dooley, please, who is it? Can anybody stand up? Stand up right now and tell me what man is working harder than Joe Dooley. Um, so he, they, they have, they, they've got a, been a nice job with that. And um, so anyway, I know that one of the things that Bubba's working on is we're going to get that audio uh, for the press conference. We finally have it. Thank you, Bubba, for being patient with me tonight. And uh Okay, well, uh, i tell you what, we'll have that on. Yeah. Uh, we'll be YouTube. on our YouTube channel. Um, I, the volume needs to be boosted, so just go to our YouTube channel, and you'll be able to check that out. Also, if you go to ecupirates.com, or, um, and it has a link there, but you, or you can just go to ECU Athletics on YouTube, and you have the post-game remarks. Um, you referenced the job that Patrick Johnson did with the call tonight, and he um, was able to catch up with Coach Dooley for about four minutes post-game, really good remarks there also on our youtube channel you'll see that game winning shot by brandon suggs from a variety of angles all right so appreciate uh, everybody viewing uh those listening and maybe this weekend uh you're catching up archives uh as well by the way make sure uh, to check all that out you can subscribe to our youtube channel like us on facebook please i appreciate all your support brother uh, oh i enjoy it years. i enjoy it i absolutely yeah. enjoy it you're always welcome, especially if we need all the basketball fans we can get on the overtime. So uh, no doubt about it. So appreciate it very much. Thanks, everybody. And in fact, uh, Pirates, one more time. What a great shot. Buzzer beater by Brandon Suggs as the Pirates win 72-71. Pirates remain undefeated 10-0 at home, 2-2 two two in the American now. And uh, looking forward to the game on Tuesday night with UCF. All right, for Pays, Bubba Rosenbaum, everybody listening and watching. I'm Dave Richmond. As always, you've been watching and listening to Pirate Basketball Overtime right here on the Sports Objective. Good night, everybody, and go Pirates.